What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the More Love Conversation series. I'm your boy, Vernon. I'm Vinny. And this is the place where we give tips and talk more love, more life. More healthy relationships, mental health, and all the things. Absolutely, man. So today we back and we're going to talk about something that comes across to us a lot in our couples counseling. And that's communication, ways to communicate. So we figured we'd throw out six tips that, that may be beneficial. And again, we always want to say, it's these aren't the only tips. These right. are just six tips that we have used, whether it's in our relationship or in our sessions, okay. to help out our couples. So please don't get stuck on just these six tips that we give you. Always be looking to expand more. This is just a starting block for, for some of the things that we talk about. What's, what's something that, that can start us off with this conversation that can help relationships and couples communicate a little bit better? Well, the day and age that we're in right now, everybody has their phones in their hands. <sighs> Listen, okay, we understand how texting is a way to communicate. It doesn't have to be the only way to communicate. And two, be mindful if you're texting important conversations. Absolutely. Important man. conversations are not for yeah, text yeah. messaging. To each his own, but just be mindful if you continue to have conversations with your significant other that of uh, that are of high importance, <clears throat> try not to text message them. Yeah. Text messaging is cool, okay. but it shouldn't be it shouldn't be the primary. It shouldn't be the go-to for communication right. for sure. To piggyback off that, a second tip that may help is be aware of your reaction versus your response when you're talking to your spouse or when you're having a conversation with your spouse. A lot of us are quick to react. So it's the impulse. They said something, so we got to jump right on it. Instead of listening to be able to respond and respond in a way that is beneficial for both of us, that lets both of us know that we're hearing each other and that we're not trying to just make the other person feel the way they're making us feel. But we're trying to get some productivity out of the conversation. So paying attention to your reaction versus your, re your response. Reaction is impulse. Response is more listening to respond. Mm -hmm. Body language. Honestly. When you're communicating with your person, allow them to know you are present. Yeah. Allow them to feel that you're here and that you're listening. Yes. Please, another part of that is keeping the phone in your hand, like just, you know, being absent-minded when you're communicating with your significant other. So, you know, if your spouse is speaking to you, show them that you're listening, look at them, engage with them. And even if you, you know, may not be in a space to always engage, just keep that part in mind because body language is a big deal. And when you're having a conversation, if your face is frowned up, if your arms are crossed, if you're like, oh, goodness, those things are like poor body language when you're communicating with your person. So keep that in mind. Body language is huge, man. And it's probably one of those things that we don't really pay attention to, especially when we're the one talking or we're the one trying to express an idea. But body language is important, man. So, yeah, definitely. Piggyback off the body language, tone, your tone of voice. If I'm trying to get a good conversation and I'm yelling at you like this. You may not be willing to hear what I have to say. Two people that are yelling at each other aren't really listening. But also, my tone can help make what I'm saying a little bit more acceptable for my spouse or my partner. Right. If I'm talking harsh or I'm talking aggressive, or even if I'm talking condescending or trying to be snark and slick, that's not going to get the response that you're looking for. But if I'm aware of my tone and I'm, I'm, I'm giving a tone where I'm, I'm, I'm giving that I'm open to the conversation and that I'm really trying to get a message across and trying to meet somebody where they are and not just trying to prove that they're wrong or trying to prove that I'm right or just try to be aggressive and over talk somebody. So being aware of my tone, being aware of how I'm presenting the message that I'm trying to get across so that it could be easier for somebody to receive. So tone, I think, is a big one, too, to be aware of for sure. Absolutely. Say what you mean, mean what you say. So a lot of times, and that kind of piggybacks off of the tone, the body language, and even the texting. Like, we get so caught up in the emotions of a conversation that we just start talking. We just start saying anything. We start saying stuff that hurts people's feelings, or we start saying stuff that's not even relevant to what we're talking about. 
So let's try to do a better job of sticking to the script and meaning what we say and saying what we mean. Let's not play guessing games. You know what I mean? Let's not try to say part of what we're talking about and then expect the other person to know what we mean. No, we want to be clear about our messages. We want to be clear about what we're trying to get out of the conversation. What is our objective with this? What is our stance? Where are we coming from? But be mindful of what we're saying. Don't just talk to hear yourself talk, but have some substance and have be mindful of what the goal of the conversation is and that there are two people in the conversation. So you're not just saying things to hurt somebody's feelings, but you're saying things because this is really what you mean and what you really meant to say. And when you're having a difficult conversation, just to add to what you said, if, if someone is saying something that can hurt your feelings, then that person may shut down. Right. Their body language will decrease. They may not be present in the conversation anymore. And now they're thinking about the things that you said and you guys are not really, you know, tuning into whatever it was you were speaking about in the first place. Mm -hmm. So now that's another thing that you are preoccupied with while you're having a conversation and possibly something else that you have to heal from because you feel like your significant other said something that hurt your feelings. Yeah. So definitely be mindful of what you say and don't go tit for tat with them. Yeah, we're not, you know, when we're trying to have these good constructive and productive conversations we like to use the term we don't want to get stuck in the weeds man we want to stay focused on what the important part of the conversations yeah. are so that that's the substance that we can focus on and it's really easy to get caught in the weeds and yeah. talk about things that aren't relevant to what the conversation is so yeah. saying what you mean and meaning what you say is important absolutely so i want to add the last tip that I feel we, we use in our sessions with couples when we do activities. And sometimes when you may not uh, be comfortable with having a conversation, you may, you know, tiptoe around your words. But sure. if it's something that's a little bit uncomfortable or if it's a serious conversation, you can use touch. You could touch a person. Let them know like, hey, you know... <laughs> This conversation is, is, is of high importance. It's serious, but I'm not coming at you. Um, I'm not trying to cause an argument, but there is something that needs to be expressed. So you can touch your significant other just to let them know like, hey, I'm just trying to have a conversation here. Touch their leg, touch their shoulder, look at them. Those are all good tools to have an effective conversation with your person. Sure. So keeping that in mind as well. I like that. You'd be surprised how the soft touch can bring somebody's defenses down. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could be, you know, they can feel like this is going to be a tense conversation, but just a little, you know, hand on the knee or, you know, hand on the shoulder or even grabbing the hand and addressing it in a, in a, in a softer manner can yeah. really help help the conversation go forward. So I like that one. Touch is a good one. And I think that's one that a lot of people don't really think about when we talk about communication and ways to, to communicate, how important touch can be. So don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm. And share this with any couples you know, because these could be tips that could not only help you and your friendships, family, or, you know, intimate relationships, but communication is something that's universal. We all Absolutely. have to communicate. So Absolutely. please keep these, these tips in mind. And obviously this is communication with couples, but this is, this is things that can help your communication in all aspects of your life right here. So Absolutely. definitely share this with us. We appreciate y'all. We always look forward to hollering at y'all and seeing y'all. We hope y'all look forward to seeing us again as well. Um, again, I'm Vernon. I'm Venice. It's the More Love Conversation Series. Peace.